Thanks for watching everybody. I'm at Dobson Ranch in Arizona with Blake Cannon. Hey Blake. Short game expert and uh, a touring professional as well. So Blake, um, I've heard tour pros on TV and stuff say that a lot of times they'd rather be in the bunker than like around the green in, in like, you know, the rough or other things like that. Like for them, the margin of error is easier or something like that. But man, like if you look at the statistics, like on Arcos and things like that, like people really struggle out of the bunker. Yeah. Like like their up and down percentage from a bunker is like, even for a scratch golfer, is very low. So how do, how do we make this a little less stressful and a little bit more like, okay, maybe, maybe this can be. Well, the first thing to that is the stats are a little biased because PJ Tour sand is a lot better than most average golf courses, okay. which makes a big difference. If you yeah, have really like good they rake consistent it, sand, wet it, yeah. rake it's, it again, that, that's, sprinkle it. But right. bunker shots shouldn't be scary. And it's definitely the most common one. People are like, oh, I'm pretty good around the greens, but I can't even get out of the bunker. Okay. And it's not hard, but it's totally different than anything else we do in golf. Mm -hmm. It has to be hit differently. We're not really even hitting the golf ball as much as we're hitting the sand. Okay. So one of the first things I'll do with people is walk them through a basic setup. Yeah. And then from there, I actually have them hit sand as opposed to hitting a golf ball, because that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit the sand, right? Yeah. So let's try something fun before we start. Sure. So just the, the fat of the green in the middle. So okay. put your ball there. Okay. We're going to hit it at the same time. Okay. You're lefty. I'm ready. And uh, we're both just trying to get it in the middle of the green. All right. You tell me when we're ready. Okay. Three, two, one, swing. Okay, so I'm a little lazier, you're a little bit more brisk. So there's some differences, but like, what can we learn about? Uh, let's just come in here and just see kind of how uh, the bottom is and then talk about how that relates then to setup. Where our actual bottom is, is probably gonna be pretty close to the golf ball mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, everywhere else we want it kind of in front. But here, our contact point's generally two inches behind it where we're entering the sand, but the goal with a, with a good with good bunker technique is I should be able to enter the sand anywhere from about here to here and make good contact. That's what kills people is they have they leave themselves because their attack angle doesn't match the sand and the lie condition. So if you enter the sand here, yep, but your attack angle is that exactly, then you're you've no. So chance. you you yeah. what you made contact probably that far behind the ball, right here on that one. Yeah, about three inches. So yeah. I'm gonna hit try and make contact back here. And it still gets out, right? Just yeah, by right. changing attack angle. Yeah, and I hit further behind it behind than you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with a reasonably good bunker shot, even with a terrible contact point. Yeah, you got to get out of the bunker. You got to get out yeah, of that, the bunker. That's the number one thing. Yeah, it's like the first thing to do. So here's 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 what I how I run people through it. The biggest the biggest change is the setup. You almost never see proper setups. When you walk around and watch people hit bunker shots, okay. their setups are never proper. Okay. Because it's totally different. And here's what I tell people. You need a wider stance. Mm -hmm. If you've ever ridden a horse before, even if you haven't, you can kind of picture what it looks like, right? Yes, so you sir. get a wider stance, your feet are a little flared, and I tell people I want you to pretend like you're sitting down on a horse. So my knees are spread out, mm -hmm. my butt's down nice and low, and then from here, my my legs to an extent kind of are in concrete throughout the motion. Yep. So when I go to swing, I'm not trying to add a lot of legs in my motion. There's gonna be some, but I'm not using any kind of leg driver force like that. Oh, okay. Okay? The, the next biggest thing is people don't use enough loft. People okay. don't want to open the face. Okay. They want to keep a square face. Well, we're trying to get the club through the sand. If my face is square and my leading edge is working like that, my club is dragging on that sand. Okay. That's making my contact a lot more difficult to be consistent with. Now, if my face is open, all of a sudden, I'm just throwing sand. Where essentially all we're trying to do out of a bunker is we're trying to get this club and throw sand. So I think a, a good first drill, Blake, sounds like just get into a bunker and just do this, just feel the difference. Just feel the difference. Yeah. Because that's that's what's gonna happen. You can see how much easier that club glides through, okay. right? Uh -huh. So as we open the face, you it, it can't be ignored. This is something we talked about in another short game segment. But as we open this face, yeah, watch this. So if I if all I do is just open. Oh, so yeah. show me where the target is. So let's say the target's at that golf ball for a minute. Okay, that's yeah, our, yeah. That's mm -hmm. our target line, right? Uh huh. So if I now if I open the face but don't lower the handle, now my my loft in my face is essentially pointed out to the left right uh -huh. so as i open the more i open i have to lower the handle of the club down because i want that loft going straight up mm -hmm. i don't want it going off to the left with the handle high yeah so as we come into this golf ball as i start to open this club up as i open i'm gradually lowering the handle okay so that relationship and and it has to stay there 
So you're going to see a lot of guys when they get in the bunker, as they open the face, you're going to see their handles start to look like it's almost down between their legs. It's because they're trying to get the ball to come up. Can you hit one like that? Yeah. Sir? So I'm going to, I'll go real exaggerated and I'm going to have the face pancaked open. You can see how low my hands are. And now as I hit this, I'm actually trying to maintain those hands down throughout the motion. So like if there was a table or something here like yep. that. Yeah. Like I'm swinging and keeping them down. And that's how you can start to hit those really high soft shots that everybody's looking for. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And if you watch as I come through impact, my hands are actually staying down throughout. That, those are the, the biggest things. And for the most part, like, let, let's say like you hit one here, that's like the standard bunker yep. shot. I think when Phil Mickelson did that thing in the off season, so that's like kind of standard. So then even if you were hitting it further or shorter, are you like using 60 for like 80 or no, 90% of? No, there definitely comes a point when I will start using 56, 52. And the reason being is I always want to be able to open the face at least slightly because I want to use the balance. I want that club to glide. So there comes a point where, and I can talk in a little more detail how I change ranges with the same club, but there comes a point when I, it's just too much loft and I can't open the face anymore and hit the same style of bunker shot that I prefer to hit. So for me, yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, so for our stock kind of bunker shot, we get uh, like we're sitting on a horse. Yep, legs are in concrete. And then from here, the only thing I tell people, this is the time in golf when it's okay to let that club head feel like it's passing you on the way down. Okay. So, the only other thing that changes in the setup, mm -hmm. it, it, two things can make you need to change that. One, if you're on a slope, uphill okay. or downhill, and how firm the sand is. Yeah. So if I come in here, this is a bunker shot that, that just people hate, right? They get in this real firm sand, now I'm down to clay. Oh this my is gosh. Okay, so Blank has set up this, if you take the sand out of the bunker, this happens a lot at public courses, a lot. And uh, go all the way, so this is like, there's not much there. There's a shot I really struggle with. So, so I've heard before, then you got to square the face up more and dig it more. What do you have to you do? Want, you want a little bit, a little bit less loft, but I still use loft. The biggest thing is as the sand gets firm, my attack angle has to get much deeper because now I have to get the club underneath the ball. Mm -hmm. If I'm set up kind of 50-50 and I make my normal bunker shot, what's, what happens to people is that club hits behind it like it normally should, but because it's firm, it skips up and hits the middle of the ball. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I take my upper body and I am drastically leaned over and you can see, like if I go face on, this would be a normal attack angle. Yeah. As I tilt this body, it's almost mm -hmm. like I'm starting to chop and I gotta get that, I gotta drive that club. Like underneath. almost like you're on a downhill line. Yeah, and I probably have 80, 90% on my front foot and I'm, I'm trying to get the club underneath the ball. Yep, and you need a little shorter swing because the firm ground speeds the club up. So if I wanna get this thing to pop up, it's gotta be steep and it's gonna be a little shorter swing and I can still get the club even off clay. I can get the ball even off clay to pop straight up. I'm gonna try that. The opposite relationship happens with more sand. So that's, okay. so I want you to feel like you get your upper body weight stacked over your lead knee. And first of all, this is my 54. I should have my 60. Yeah, yeah. so it's gonna but be a little bit right. harder. But uh, ball position wise, or, or are we like- It's still pretty there? forward, okay. especially because we're leaning. So I want you to feel like you get real stacked and feel like your weight's sitting over this front knee. Now from here, let that club hinge up and down vertically. Is that yep. face uh, about so it's a yeah, little less with, open than normal and with a 54 open. especially you wouldn't want it because it because it has so much bounce okay. but now i want you to just let that club swing more on that steep plane and a little smaller swing than you normally would good and for a 54 that was really good yeah got it out yeah so let's that, talk about the uh, another uh, difference so if it's really fluffy like we get into a bunker like kind of this area yeah and even more where if they like if there's like a lot of sand it's going to be the complete opposite all so do this you, is on an upslope. This is always confusing me. It if it's really fluffy sand, do you swing easier? And if it's really granular, like dirt no. mixed sand, like I don't, what is the, the, the this like what, what is the energy needed depending on the different types the of sand? En well, if your attack angle is proper, your energy doesn't have to change that much. Okay. If your attack angle doesn't change with the sand conditions, mm -hmm. then you'd have to swing a lot harder out of soft sand. It's okay. so like this one. This is a double whammy because it's a lot of sand and it's on an upslope, right? So everything. If I set up with my normal setup, my club is just going to pile drive into that sand. All right, in the fluffy sand. Yeah, so, you're gonna... so the fluffy sand, so I have my shoulders match in this slope, and then I'm going to use a lot more bounce and throw, but my weight's going to be more back. Okay. So I'm going to be trying to get that club to be feeling like it's coming a little bit more up. So so on the bare lie, everything's this way, Yep. getting into that. I'm orienting my setup to drive it, 
and on, on the, the fluffy, fluffy stuff. on the fluffy stuff we're, we're more this way and it's almost like we're hitting an uphill stretch even if we were on flat if we were on a flat like yeah. if we take all this sand yeah. and we bring it down here so i create a hole see i you know this is kind of an example of what fluffy sand might look like right here flatten that out i'm gonna look very 50 50 mm -hmm. maybe even like 60 40 like 60, even 40, even maybe a little bit the back, yeah. if it's puffy enough like if there's if there's thick enough sand and then from here I, the more loft i use the easier it's going to be for the club to slide through okay because as i get a lot of sand it's really easy for the club to do that right so i tell people you want to use more loft be set up more neutral and the club's gonna, the ball's gonna come out more like you want being able to read and adjust is the key for bunkers riding the horse yep now if it's normal sand we're about 50 50. yeah if it's 50 /50. fluffy we're we're a little more if on it's this like that, like hawaii real thick sand like crazy thick sand something like that we mean thick like where it's like, like lots of or you know how there's certain sand that's really dense too uh -huh. there's different because there's different sand types you have really dense sand yeah and then you have like that like fluffy stuff that they get on tour yeah but the dense sand like if it's that heavier granular heavier, yeah, yeah then you have to use a little bit more balance so that means a little oh. more loft maybe a little bit more back foot it's all about adapting and, and then you can activate this more and on the on the on the hard pack you have to drive it more and on the fluffy one you have to do this one and this is the one time in golf when you get the opportunity to kind of test your lie right oh, yeah right this is so you you're using that as feedback every time you dig into a bunker mm -hmm. you're gauging what that sand and you know you're hoping it's pretty close the two feet from wherever you're standing wherever your ball is you're hoping it's about the same all right we're out, we escaped. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Click the subscribe button to this video. It really helps the channel a lot. And go visit Blake here at Dobson Ranch. You can have all of his, con all of Blake's contact information is in the description to this video. Thanks for watching, bye. All right, great.